All right. <clears throat> so, in your homework, you had uh, one compound that you uh, predicted as a product for which um, there were that you, you you didn't know for sure uh, what its physical state was. In fact, all of them, um, the two comp the three compounds in your homework, you weren't absolutely sure about the physical state, but you probably guessed they were all aqueous, and the last one wasn't. So I'm going to show you how we know. Okay, I'm going to start with the last one first, okay? So when I say in an aqueous environment, it means in water. So if you have any, any um, substance in the equation that says aqueous, there's water around. It doesn't have to be uh, in any other, any other place. Only, you only have to have one compound or one, uh, well, really, you don't really have atoms have to do that very much, elements do that very much. But if it says aqueous, there's water around. If I've got H2O and it says an L after that for liquid, you've got water around. Okay? Yeah, H2O. Right. So it is an aqueous environment if water is around. Okay? It is an aqueous environment if even one chemical in the equation says aqueous. I know that ice is a solid, mm -hmm. but would that still be considered aqueous? No, if it's ice, it'd be S for solid. Yeah. If it's steam, it'd be uh, G for yeah, gas. But, but ice grips. Ooh, it what? Dry. Grips. When it's okay. Like water. So then it's liquid. No. no it's ice that. is a solid. It maintains its shape without, it doesn't take the shape of its container, so it's a solid. The, Okay. Well, you know, you have to choose. You, sometimes you make choices about what the best description is. If I have ice sitting out on the table, it's going to be wet on the outside where it's starting to melt. But if most of it's solid, then I'd call it a solid. It depends on what I'm doing. Uh, all of this is the description of what is going on in the reaction. Okay? So if what we form is solid water, then we call it solid. It might melt afterward, but we're going to call it solid water. Yes? Uh, is, is the law of attraction I have to, like, scientific law, like, do you consider that it's, they, like, or somebody say that you, do you consider it, like, you are scientists, like, okay, I understand, I said that as a scientific law. The law of what? Attraction. Attraction. Like, do you think? Never mind. I'm not familiar with the law of attraction. I think it's documentary about science, never mind. Okay. Well, um, it may be stated in a different way. Yeah, it's just like in quantum physics, you would think it's not a law. No, you'd have to give me more information like, to know what's coming. Like, if, if in, like, if you, like, how you perceive things, like, say I just, like, went on thinking good thoughts, and I thought about the same thing every day, mm -hmm. it would end up coming to me. Like, That's the law of attraction? Yeah. It was on a okay. Oh, well, I'm not familiar with it. If you can give me a name for the, I'll I'll try to look it up. All right, now, let's go back to this, please. Okay. So this is the one that we couldn't call aqueous, and that was barium fluoride. Okay. And here's how we're going to know. This is on your test references. They're called solubility rules. Okay. Solubility rules. Now, these only apply to ionic compounds, okay? So, is this an ionic compound? And how do we know it's an ionic compound? There's no polyatomic ions in this formula. There's a metal bonded to a nonmetal. You know it's an ionic compound most of the time 
when a metal is bonded to a nonmetal, or if a polyatomic ion is part of the formula. But there's no polyatomic ion here. The first part of the rule stands. Okay, metal, nonmetal. It's an ionic compound. So then the solubility rules will apply here. All right. Now in this equation, I showed aluminum fluoride as one of the reactants, and I showed it being aqueous. So since the aluminum fluoride is there, and it is shown as being aqueous, we know there's water around. So we need to know, will this dissolve in water? And that's what solubility means. Solubility means ability to dissolve in water. Actually, any liquid, but typically it's referring to dissolving in water. Okay? Solubility means the ability to dissolve in water. Solubility means the ability to dissolve in in water. So something that is soluble can dissolve in water, and something that is insoluble largely does not. Okay, now that's a relative term, because we'll call, we call things that are insoluble when very, very small amounts can still dissolve in water. But if, you know, largely speaking, you can't get much of it to dissolve at all, then we're going to call it insoluble. I don't know. When you jump in the tub, do you, do you dissolve? If you don't dissolve in the tub, then I guess you're not, in, you're not soluble. What now? Table salt? Sure, table salt dissolves in water. So does table sugar. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right. So what we want to do is define on this so set of solubility rules this compound. Now barium doesn't show up at the front end of, of these rules, okay? But fluorine does. Here's fluorine. It says all fluorides. Now any binary compound in which fluorine is on the back side of it is a fluoride. Any binary compound in which fluorine is the second element that compound is a fluoride, because when we name this, we name it barium fluoride. In the last unit, we learned how to name compounds, and we would name this barium fluoride using the ionic naming rules. Okay? So this is a fluoride, and that's what it says here, all fluorides, except group 2. So while most fluoride compounds are soluble, fluorides that are bonded to a group 2 metal are not. Well, where is barium? Get out your periodic table. Don't wait for me to answer it for you. That's called passive learning. You need to be an active learner. Active learners learn more. Where is group two on the periodic table? Yeah, the second column of the periodic table. Where is barium? Barium is on the third column? Oh, never mind. Oh, never mind. It's third row, it's second column. Second, no, it's second uh, row. It's second row. Barium. barium is in the second column. It's a group two metal. So, since the fluoride here is bonded to a group two metal, it is insoluble. Okay? If it's insoluble, we call it a solid. Okay? That's how you figure out in an aqueous environment when an ionic compound is going to be soluble. The whole thing. Or not. The whole thing can dissolve in, will not dissolve in water, largely speaking. That's what that means. Okay? The other products we had in your homework included chromium nitrate. Okay? Now that I've shown you how to use this, see if you can find a rule that applies to chromium nitrate. This is an assignment. Everybody has to do it. And why do you know that? All nitrates and all these words are <laughs> soluble. Okay, so all nitrates are soluble. Doesn't matter what you bond to a nitrate, that compound is going to be soluble. If it's soluble, then it's going to dissolve in water. If it dissolves in water, it's aqueous. If it dissolves in water, AQ. Okay? Then we had another product, aluminum bromide. 
See if you can find on the solubility rules. Don't speak out loud here. Let everybody have a chance. <laughs> Let's see if you can find a rule that applies to aluminum bromide. I see one hand went up. He's ready to answer. Everybody has to do this now. You have, this is your chance to practice before it's required that you do it in some kind of homework or quiz. It shouldn't be hard. Well, it will be part of the homework tonight. So, all right. I see. I, I see three hands up. Actually, four because one person's holding it up twice. Five. Who, who's still working on this? No. No. Yeah, I'll get I'll, I'll get both of you one in a second. Okay. All right. It's soluble. Why? All right, so the statement was that all chlorides, bromides, and iodides, well, that's a bromide, are in that soluble group. The exceptions are silver, lead, or mercury, but this is not either any of those three, so this must be soluble. And therefore, if there's water around, it will be aqueous. Okay? So don't make it harder than it has to be. It's just a puzzle that you have to figure out. Does that make sense? 